So we're starting with the foundations of quantum mechanics. So I'm starting on page 17 of my notes, and every time I knew a new page, I'll yell at the page number. So 1924, Max Born is thinking about, oh, actually not just Max Born, so the entire group at the Copenhagen Institute, this is under the direction of Niels Bohr, uh, Max Born, uh, Werner Heisenberg, Erwin Schrodinger, Niels Bohr himself, um, and so many others were working on how do you describe light and matter. And we know from Maxwell that light behaves as a wave. And so this is um, also from Young's double slit experiment and countless other scientists uh, who contributed to this idea that light behaves as a wave. And it has both a wavelength and a frequency. And the energy associated with that frequency is equal to, well, fun side story. OK. So we know that light behaves as a wave, but then the work of Max Planck with the black body radiation concern and the um, uh, ultraviolet, ultraviolet catastrophe let us to know that light also behaves as a particle. And so E equals H nu. This is the Planck condition. And so light behaves as a particle as well. So wave-particle duality. Here's the kicker. How does matter behave? Well, just from existing, we know that matter behaves as a particle. Particle. But it wasn't until the work of Davison Germer um, and there's a couple others who found out that matter also behaves as a particle. Or that, sorry, as a wave. And we know from de Broglie that the de Broglie wavelength is h over p, and p is equal to h over mv. This is the momentum. And so uh, where h is Planck's constant, and so now we have light acting as a wave and a particle, but matter also acting as a wave and a particle. So wave-particle duality throughout both types, matter and wa uh, light. Um, and so some really cool uh, uh, results were found from the Davis and Germer experiment. And this is where they took nickel. Each one of these is a nickel atom. And they showed ele shined electrons onto the surface. And so if electrons behave as a wave, they're going to come in. And then what happens is they diffract. And so they make a diffraction pattern. Well, we know that diffraction patterns means you have both constructive and destructive interference occurring, which is wave-like properties. And so when the electrons came in, so if you think about my hands, um, if my two hands are uh, the, or where my hands are overlapping, that's the constructive interference. And then if they're exactly opposite, so if the tip of this finger and the, uh, is on the tip of this palm, so that's destructive interference. And so everywhere in between, there's a combination of con so purely constructive, destructive. So there's going to be some sort of combination if you don't have them completely or uh, perfectly aligned. So the idea is light's coming in, it hits the surface, and then this one bounces off, but this one has to still come down farther and then bounces off. So I'll get two. So there's this slight difference in the wavelengths as they're coming in at an angle. And so that slight offset causes, so there's the crest of this wave, well, there's the crest of that wave, and there's, they should be slightly offset. Oops. So there's a slight offset there, and that slight offset causes constructive or destructive interference to occur, which means you're going to have an, a diffraction pattern. And the fact that they saw that, that showed that matter also behaves as a wave. Crazy, right? So if matter behaves as a wave, that means that we need new equations to represent how we can describe matter. If it acts like a particle, you have F equals ma, or F equals mass times the second derivative oops, of the position. So because the first derivative of the position is velocity, the second derivative is, is, of position is acceleration. And so this is Newton's equation, and this describes all matter in its particle form. But how do you incorporate wave-like matter or wave-like properties into this equation? Well, we need a new one. And so this is where um, we uh, kind of developed this idea that, um, well, 
we need to start somewhere. And so the goal is that we need an, uh, an equation to represent how electrons move. Pause. <laughs>